Lake Placid in New York State is the scene of the four-man bobsled championship races. Here goes one team down the world-famous Mount Van Hovenberg run. 800 pounds of men astride 500 pounds of bobsled, headed for 26 ice-glazed turns on their course. A mile a minute and four downhill runs at record speed for the winners. And now the cameraman, trembling a little, gets aboard, and they're off. On the straightaway, speeds reach 80 miles an hour, and the run looks like this. On turn, speed is slightly reduced, the rear man on the sled applying the brakes. Bobsledding is a fast and dangerous sport, which calls for courage and teamwork. At New York's LaGuardia Airport, wounded veterans arrived by airliner to receive medical treatment. These veterans fought in the common struggle against the Nazi invader in Greece. Some in the Army, some in the Navy and others in the valiant Greek resistance forces. A girl patriot of the resistance movement is among them. Welcome to the United States. They will be given all the medical aid that science can provide. Presenting the Douglas DC-6, latest American transport airliner. Completely reversible pitch propellers make it possible for the plane to back up, an advantage in parking and storage. The DC-6 takes its place in the international development of peacetime world air travel. The takeoff is fast and smooth. the pressurized cabin, 52 passengers have all the comforts of modern travel. Comfortable lounges with indirect lighting, lavatories, dressing rooms, and buffet sections for the passengers' mealtime needs. Daytime accommodations can be converted into upper and lower berths in less than half a minute, and the sleeping accommodations are just as comfortable as the best of railroad travel. New and bigger airline transports will continue to link together the people of the world. In California, the United States Army Air Force presents its first jet-propelled fighter plane squadron. In line for formation maneuvers, America's fastest planes taxi for the takeoff. These P-80 shooting stars have crossed the American continent in a little more than four hours. Now they will go through battle formation tests. photograph the airfield as the jet planes, capable of more than 700 miles an hour, are held down to about 500. The fighters work together as a deadly team at high speeds, approaching the speed of sound. against the Arctic. At the northern town of Churchill in Canada's province of Manitoba begins the saga of Operation Muskox, the famous snowmobiles heading for the Arctic regions on a journey of exploration. Experts from eight countries, including the United States and Russia, study the route of the 3,100-mile, 81-day trip. Basic training for the polar trek is building igloos in which to sleep if necessary. Eskimos can put up an igloo in a couple of hours, but the expedition's members take twice as long. Food is pre-cooked and then frozen, 5,900 calories a day per man. Clothing is especially designed for the 50 below zero cold. From five air supply bases in the frozen north, food and fuel will be parachuted to the men several times a week. 
Even as far north as the magnetic pole, the expedition will not be out of touch with civilization. Now the 12 vehicles get underway. Each heated cabin can sleep four men. Originally designed for the invasion of Norway, these snowmobiles will enable man to increase his useful knowledge of the Arctic regions. St. Peter's Cathedral in Rome, center of world Catholicism, is the scene of climax ceremonies as 32 prelates await their elevation as cardinals. Among them are four Americans, Francis Spellman of New York, Samuel Stritch of Chicago, Edward Mooney of Detroit, and John Glennon of St. Louis. Then within the eye-filling magnificence of St. Peter's, Pope Pius XII, born aloft, is received with reverence and awe by the 20,000 persons in the edifice. To the 330 million Catholics throughout the world, it is a time not only of drama and pageantry, but one of moving spiritual greatness. Rome, slowly recovering from years of war and suffering and fascism, once again looks to a world at peace after seven long years of darkness. Beneath the fabled dome of the cathedral, the first stone of which was laid in 1506, the long-awaited ceremonies are about to begin. From 19 countries brought by plane and train and ship, the prelates have journeyed for this solemn moment. Only 28 of the 32 designated were able to take part in the procession. the Pope to receive the traditional red hat. The hats are not intended to be worn, but are symbols of the high estate of the princes of the church. Cardinals from Holland, Hungary, China, England, Canada, and many other countries receive their red hats. To each one, the Pope reads a formula in Latin. Cardinal Spellman of New York is honored with the same titular church that was the Pope's when he was Cardinal Pacelli. The Pope smiles at the man who is one of his close friends. Cardinal Chen of China is elevated in this first church consistory since 1940. highlight of the ceremony comes when the 28 new cardinals prostrate themselves before the main altar of the basilica. This gesture is symbolic of humble servitude. Their great hoods cover their heads as they rededicate themselves to the service of the church. Now the pontiff descends the steps of his throne as the drama nears its end. For the first time in history, the Italian cardinals are a minority in the College of Cardinals. The whole world is reminded once again of the ancient traditions of a church that continues to be a major force in the world today. <laughs> 